Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm going to be starting the week off with a collection update. Now this is not going to be a very big collection update. I did not get a lot of stuff uh, this week. Um, mostly records. Um, I didn't get many movies. I only got two movies only on DVD actually and then two VHSs. But um, not a whole lot this week, so I figured I might as well just uh, do this to get it done. Um, and I know that I haven't really, I didn't do a lot of videos this past week. Uh, I was just working a lot, a lot of hours at work, um, putting in a lot of overtime, which is always a good thing. Not, a, it's not definitely not a bad thing. Um, just trying to, you know, make some more money uh, to get ready for the new adventure that is a home. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, getting moving on that, um, and just trying to, you know, make, make some things happen. Um, but of course, obviously I'm still going to enjoy life and enjoy myself and, and get some stuff as you see here, cause you got to have fun in life. Just got to take a drink. Sorry. Um, just got done working out, but yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. I will just do the uh, all the music stuff first and get that out of the way. Um, first up, I did get one uh, 45, one seven inch single here. And this is uh, God Gave Me Everything by Mick Jagger. Um, I absolutely love this song. I really do. Um, it was featured in Bruce Almighty, um, but it had come out, I think, a year or two before. Um, what's the copyright on here? 2001. And then Bruce Almighty came out in 2003. Um, but, yeah, uh, this is a great song. I do remember when this came out. It was a pretty big hit. Uh, Lenny Kravitz plays guitar on it, and he wrote the song with Mick Jagger. So very, very cool. Um, I don't know which Mick Jagger album it's from. That is on vinyl. But in the meantime, I just decided to grab the uh the single and then the b-side is uh visions of paradise i don't know that song but very cool found this really cheap on uh, ebay actually so i figured why not um grab it and then there is another uh seven inch single which i will show uh later because it is a bootleg and i will show it with the other bootlegs that i got um but then i got a few uh, albums here. Uh, first up, got this one in the mail today. It is the first uh, Vinnie Vincent Invasion album, which is just simply titled Vinnie Vincent Invasion. Um, and this is a gold stamp promo copy. Uh, got this for a decent price. It was like 20 bucks, and it is in really nice shape. It's got some minor you know, wear and tear to it, but other than that, it is actually in pretty damn good shape for being a 30 plus year old record. Um, but very, very cool stuff on here. Um, Mark Slaughter is on the album cover. I don't, um, well, that's because when the album came out, he was in the band. Um, he is not the singer on this album. Robert Fleischer is the singer who was, of course, the original singer for Journey. Um, for those that, uh, Fleischman, my bad, not Fleischer. Robert Fleischer is the guy that wrote, uh, Conan, right? But anyway, it does come with the original uh, lyric insert, and the the record, the disc itself is spotless. So that is that is great. I did get a pretty damn good deal on this, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, uh, no, Robert Fleischman is credited on here. Um, actually, he might be on the album. Yeah, he might actually. It might actually be him. Um, but. I do know that the music videos for this album, he is not in. Dana, or not Dana Sturm. Dana Sturm is the bass player. Uh, Mark Slaughter, is who sang on the second album, he's in all the music videos, but he's not in the on the actual album. Um, but yeah, so this is, of course, Vinnie Vincent, who was uh, in Kiss after Ace Fraley left. This is his first uh, solo record. Um, his other, the other one that he did, uh, All Systems Go, it is on vinyl. It's a little bit, I don't know why that one's a little bit more expensive. 
Um, but that's like in the $50 range on the cheap side. Again, I don't know why. It is on CD, but you know how it goes. Um, but very cool stuff on there. Uh, Boys Are Gonna Rock is a good song. Um, what was the other one? Um, Shoot You Full of Love is good. Um, Animal from this album I was in uh, the movie Summer School because I just watched Summer School and I heard the song. And I was like, wait a minute, I know this song. And it was, yeah, it was Animal by Vinnie Vincent Invasion. So very cool. Um, next up, speaking of Kiss, um, I did, uh, this took forever for some reason to get to me. It's just the mail with the coronavirus and all that. Um, but this is uh, Kiss My Ass, uh, classic Kiss Regrooved, which is a tribute album that came out back in the 90s, I think 94. Yes, um, and this is a really good tribute album. I have heard uh, all the, the songs on this before, and it is a gatefold, which you do get some really cool uh, Kiss fan tattoos and then some images of the band, and then it has all the lyrics to the songs, which is cool. Um, but yeah, so very cool stuff on here, so... Um, in terms of the lineup, you have uh, Lenny Kravitz doing Deuce, which is great. Uh, Garth Brooks doing Hard Luck Woman, another great version of that. Anthrax with She. Uh, Gin Blossoms doing Christine 16. Uh, Toad the Wet Sprocket, uh, Rock and Roll All Night. Shandy's Addiction, which is, um, I forget who's all in the band, but I know it's most of the people from Jane's Addiction and then some other people. Um... Okay, yeah, here it is right here. It's um, uh, Billy Gold on bass, uh, Maynard Keenan from Tool. Okay, for Tool, I don't know why I thought Jane's Addiction. On vocals, Tom Morello on guitars and Brad Wilk on drums, of course, from Rage Against the Machine. Okay, so I don't know why I thought it was uh, Jane's Addiction, but yeah, it was like a one-time super group that they did, which was cool. Uh, continuing on, uh, that's side one. Side two, uh, Dinosaur Jr., very underrated band, in my opinion, doing Gone Blind. Extreme doing Strutter. The Lemonheads with Plaster Caster. Mighty Mighty Boss Tones doing a very cool version of Detroit Rock City. Um, and then there's Yoshiki, which was a Japanese group doing Black Diamond. And then there is uh, Die Arzti which was a German band that does uh, Unholy in German, which is very cool, which I believe that was the bonus track for the vinyl version. Um, and then it actually comes on uh, transparent red vinyl, which is very cool. But again, oh, out of the uh, Kiss tribute albums, this is definitely one of the better ones out there. And the odd thing is um, they were not allowed to use Ace Fraley's makeup because he still owned his makeup at the time, which is why... Um, the, the kid here does not have the makeup. Um, that was, I think a version of the bandit, which Paul Stanley did before he did the star child. Um, so that's one of the alternate. And I think, um, cause it looks really Photoshopped. So I think maybe they were going to use Ace Fraley's makeup and then he threatened to sue. So they like Photoshopped it in or airbrushed it. Cause all the other ones look pretty natural. Except that one. I noticed it yesterday. But again, very cool to have on vinyl. A pretty cool uh, tribute album. And then I got these other two. Um, these are both pretty rare. Um, I wanted to, I've been wanting to get these for a while. And it is the second and third album from Government Mule, which is a great uh, band that I've always enjoyed. They are a spinoff of the Allman Brothers band. Um, Warren Haynes, who has always been one of my favorite musicians, who's been involved with uh, many, many different musical groups and projects over the years. Um, this was his uh, band that they did, you know, when the Allman Brothers weren't touring, this is what they would do. Uh, him and Alan Woody, who played bass um, in Warren Haynes' first tenure in the Allman Brothers. Um, and then they got Matt Apps on drums, who played with Dickie Betts many years before. Um, I have their first album on vinyl, and I was able to get these. These were not cheap. I will say that. They were they were not cheap to get. Um, but I did get these for uh, each. Got them for good prices. So first up, we have their second album, uh, Dose. Get it? Dose. Um, which is my favorite of the original lineup. 
and this is the um, first of all the original pressing. Um, I think they only ever did like five thousand of them on vinyl, and then the first five hundred were pressed on red vinyl, and this one is number one hundred and ninety out of five hundred, and it is autographed by each member of the band, which is very cool. So from left to right here, uh, we have um, Alan Woody, the bass player who unfortunately has passed away, Matt Apps, and Warren Haynes. Looks very, very cool in gold Sharpie. And then it comes with a little, uh, not like a poster, but an insert that has the band logo. And then these are the original sleeves that the records came in. Uh, the person that I bought both of these from uh, put in replacement sleeves to preserve these, but very cool. There's the uh, the first two sides of the album, and then there's a shot of the band on the back. Very cool stuff. And then we have the second record, sides three and four, and then the back has all the credits. Uh, but very, very cool. And then again, like I said, um, it is on transparent red vinyl. Again, uh, they only made 500 of the red ones, and they're all autographed. Um, but again, even the the black, the regular vinyl version, is still pretty hard to come by. Um, this is, again, they only made um, X amount of copies. I think five, either it was 1,000 or 5,000. I'm not sure. Um, but they only did 500 of them, number one, on red vinyl and autographed. And um, the songs on here, there's a lot of classics. Uh, Blind Man in the Dark, Thorzane Shuffle, uh, Thelonious Beck, John the Revelator, uh, Game Face, Raven Black Knight, um, I Shall Return, Larger Than Life, Towering Fool, uh, their cover of She Said, She Said by the Beatles, great song, uh, Birth of the Mule, and I Put a Spell on You. And also, um, the, the, uh, blah, 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 the track listing is different on the vinyl version, because I'm looking at this. Um, and it's definitely different from the CD version that I used to have. I got the, uh, the CD many years ago when I saw them in concert. Um, I don't have it obviously on CD anymore, but now that I'm looking at it, yeah, the track listing is different from the CD version. And I put a spell on you, uh, of course the, the old song, uh, that is a bonus track exclusive to the vinyl version, but very cool. And then. I got their third album, which this is the last one before Alan Woody died uh, 20 years ago, actually. Actually, the date, the actual 20th anniversary of his death is coming up soon here, unfortunately. But you know, time, time goes on, life goes on, whatever you want to say. But this is Life Before Insanity. Always liked this cover, always thought the cover was really cool. Um, there's the back, and again, it is a gatefold. I'll show the trinkets in a second here. Um, again, this is numbered out of uh, 500. This one is 441, and they autographed, um, Matt Apps autographed his signature in gold, but Alan Woody and Warren Haynes both did silver. So that's what the gatefold looks like, which is very cool. And then these are on transparent green vinyl. So, Again, um, they only made a very limited number of these on vinyl, and the first 500 of each were of a different color. And then we have, uh, uh, I forget, it doesn't matter. Uh, here's one of the sleeves, very cool pictures. The other sleeve, and then, or the other side of the sleeve, and then there's this one. And then it actually comes with a poster. Very cool stuff. There we go. Government Mule, Life Before Insanity. Very cool shot of them. Um, but yeah, they are, you know, for people that don't know uh, who they are, they're just a jam band. They started out as a power trio, and they have since um, added a keyboard player after Al a permanent keyboard player um, when Alan Woody passed away. And they're known for, you know, bringing up all different kind of musicians at their shows and just jamming. Um, I've only ever seen it one time in con concert, unfortunately. Um, but I've always enjoyed their music, and I'm very happy to get finally get both of those on vinyl again. I've uh, been wanting to get them for a good while. 
Got them both at a decent price. Again, they were not cheap, I will say that, but they were not entirely expensive. Um, so there we go. And then the last couple that I got here, um, I did get some more uh, bootlegs um, last time. Um, this was the guy I ordered from Sweden. I, or I did another order around the same time, and these showed up. Um, and these are all Iron Maiden uh, bootlegs. So first up, I did get a 7-inch. This one is Death or Glory and The Trooper, um, which these are from two different concerts. Uh, Death and Glory was recorded live uh, April 22nd, 2017 in Belgium, which is from the forthcoming double album Antwerp Massacre. So that is another uh, bootleg out there that I guess I'll have to find at some point. I'm not sure. And then Trooper was recorded June 26, 2016 in Russia. Um, I don't know if that show was ever released, but um, it is on a brownish, kind of a dark red, brownish type vinyl, which is very cool. So yeah, again, um, a lot of these uh, 45 or 7 inch bootlegs, a lot of these are in very, very limited numbers. So um, I do like to pick these up as in addition to the regular uh, bootlegs because they only, again, put them in very small numbers. Um, but the two, like, full length or, or the, the album ones, first up, we have Xmas 80, which, of course, this is the original lineup with Paul Diano on vocals. Uh, this is from The Rainbow in London, England, December 21st, 1980. So, um, again, the first two uh, Maiden albums are represented on here. And I, I think both of these are just on plain old black vinyl but they are both gatefolds um got some really cool shots of of the band in there and uh just want to double check here but i believe yeah these yeah black black yeah these are both uh this one and the next one that i'm going to talk about are just on plain old black vinyl um the guy did not have any uh colored vinyl of these, but that's okay. Um, you know, I, I there is colored vinyl versions of these two. I was looking online. Um, if I ever find them for a decent price, I'll pick them up. And then we have uh, Beast over Hammersmith, and this is from, uh, of course, the Hammersmith Odeon, once again in London. Um, March 20th, 1982, Bruce Dickinson is in the band at this point. And, of course, stuff from the first three albums is on here so very cool and again it is a gatefold they both have the japanese obi strips as well which i always liked and this one just has some art in here which is very cool but again um huge fan of iron maiden always have been and um i'm actually i've actually got quite a quite a few bootleg iron maiden bootlegs on vinyl uh now over the past few months so very cool stuff um, but that is all the, uh, music. So I will show, I'll get, put all that away, uh, in a minute here. And then I will show the, uh, the couple movies that I got. So first up, I got two more, uh, VHS is actually, uh, two more of Sopranos, uh, screener tapes. Um, and I believe I have all of them at this point. Um, again, I always look on eBay. And other places on the internet, but I believe I actually have all the Sopranos VHS screeners, um, unless there were some really like uh, limited ones that were like part of sets or something that I don't know about. Um, you know, again, doing research and, and looking up this stuff again, I think I was able to get the last two that I needed. I'm just again, I'm just got done working out and stuff so i'm still very dehydrated uh so first up we have none other than the first episode this is the pilot again screening cassette episode one very cool here um but yeah the pilot which uh this one i had seen on ebay before and i didn't grab so finally i just grabbed it and then we have the first episode of the third season which is mr ruggiero's neighborhood but always, always liked the the artwork for the third season where they're on the the boardwalk there at Asbury Park. Uh, always really liked that shot. Very cool. I, I would love to get like a poster or something of that one day. Um, 
but very cool here. So again, um, I believe these are the last two uh, screeners uh, of The Sopranos. Uh, I do have several. They did put several episodes out from the first five seasons um, on uh, VHS. So I believe, again, I have all of them. And uh, last but certainly not least, I did pick up uh, two movies on DVD because they're only on DVD. First up, we have uh, Terminal Justice Cybertech PD with Lorenzo Lamas. Um, this one is a little bit harder to find. Um, I did find it on eBay for a pretty decent price. It was like 27 bucks with free shipping. Um, I have not seen this one in quite a while, but I remember liking it. And uh, Chris Sarandon is in it as the bad guy. So that is a plus um, for me. Always been a big fan of Chris Sarandon from the original Fright Night, amongst other films, Child's Play, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, got another uh, Lorenzo Lamas movie in the collection. The only ones that I don't have on DVD um, that I would like to get um, overseas in Belgium, actually, of all places, they released uh, The First Swordsman, which I liked, and Final Round, which I liked. But they are pretty hard to find. Um, so I will, you know, try to grab those whenever I can. But yeah, I have most of the uh, the Lorenzo Lamas stuff that I actually want on DVD. And for those that are fans of his work, and uh, next month in September in Germany, they are releasing the Snake Eater movies on Blu-ray, and there will be features. There's actually interviews. There's a couple interviews um, with Lorenzo Lamas on there. So I'm definitely looking forward to those, and I would like to grab them. But yeah, I don't care that they're uh, overseas releases. I just want them on Blu-ray. And last but certainly not least here, once again, um, I did get a, another Dolph Lundgren movie. This is only on DVD, um, and it is The Peacekeeper, which has always been one of my favorite Dolph Lundgren movies. I have always really enjoyed this one. Um, it's kind of a diehard type movie. Um, he plays a, an Air Force guy. And he's uh, he's got like this briefcase that he's supposed to carry. And it's for the president, and these terrorists get it, and it has all the launch codes. So they go to this missile silo to launch these missiles, and Dolph goes there to try and stop them. So yeah, it is a it is a diehard type movie. Um, and Montel Williams, yes, the Montel Williams is uh, Dolph's sidekick in this, which was cool, and I thought he did fine. Um, and Roy Scheider plays the president and stuff. Michael Sarazen plays the bad guy. But, yeah, HBO and Cinemax used to show this a lot back in the day, so I used to watch it, and I've had it on VHS for a long time. And I was just sitting there, I was thinking about this movie, I was watching, um, some stuff about this movie on here on YouTube, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna buy this movie. And I went on eBay and grabbed it, and this is the, uh, original snapper case release which is what i wanted a couple cool pictures in there um not bad but yeah this is again one of the uh better uh dolph lundgren movies in my opinion and i just finally decided to uh grab it on dvd maybe one day uh we'll get a blu-ray release of it hopefully because again i do think it's one of the better dolph lundgren films but anyway um that is it uh, for this collection updates. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Next, I will get back into this week will be a little bit easier with work. Um, so I'm not uh, worried about that. Um, so yeah, I will finish up the, uh, the top movies of 2000, 2005, 2010, and 2015. So I have four more years to cover. And then I do have some more random videos planned, and then we will go from there. So anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys later. See you.